God bless you. Well, I probably sound a little bit stuffed up, but work always needs to be done. There's no time for laziness, for a man is worthy of his wages. And if a man is not prepared to work, he should also be prepared to not eat. And there's much work to be done, much labouring to be done. And God is always there to help us. And in our weakness, it's God that gives us strength. He's the one that guides us. He's the one that leads us. He's the one that strengthens us in our weakness. So that's all glory to God. All thanks in the name of Jesus Christ that we can do as we ought. You see, we were made for good works that we should walk in them. We should be glorifying our Father by our God good works, just as written in Sermon on the Mount. But it's up to us, if we will, or if we even want to. Because where your heart is, there your treasure is. If your treasure is in the Lord, then you'll be focused in the Lord. But if your treasure is in the world, then you'll be focused in the world. Again, as I say, the choice is yours. Jesus gave his life for each and every one of us to save us. He didn't come to condemn, but to save those of us that reject him, that do not want him, they have that choice. But they condemn themselves. For God made perfectly clear all the things seen and unseen, the wonders of his creation. All these things, by just even looking or even digging, archaeology and so forth, there's no excuse to ignore all the great wonders of God's mighty arm. Noah's Ark you can find. Sodom and Gomorrah you can find. The city of David you can find. The dispersion when all the Israelites went through the wilderness you can find their walk, their path. Mount Sinai you can find. All things can be found. People like to grumble far too quickly and far too easily. We're all to blame for this. We need perseverance. We need endurance. We need more compassion, more love, more kindness. So we need the fruits of the Spirit. That's Galatians chapter 5. From verse 22 to verse 26. So I recommend you read them. And you have to realize that they do differ from the gifts of the Spirit. Now the gifts of the Spirit you'll find in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 13. Read them and study. Now you remember that ask and you receive, knock and the door be answered, seek and you find. And those that lack wisdom ask your Father in heaven, who will give liberally to those that ask but don't be like a double-minded man or a ship tossed to and fro in the waves. Pray with faith without doubting. What you ask for, you receive. So if you're asking for fruits of the Spirit, then ask. If you're asking for a gift of the Spirit, then ask. It is God that gives upon the person the measure of faith. Trust in Him. Because it is God that raises the dead. Christ rose again the third day from the grave, conquering death. He gave his life for us and because of us. Because our sins separated us from our Father in heaven. He came to reconcile us. He came to help us and to save us. So praise the Lord in joyful thanks, in songs and psalms and praise. You see, God guides. He leads in various ways. Some with prophecy, some with dream. For God pours out his spirit upon his people to give warning, to give that time to be ready. For it is time to repent and confess unto the Lord to turn from sin, to seek God and all his goodness and kindness so that we 
can stand steadfast. Because Jesus is at the right hand of God. In a time of persecution, a time of peril and of danger does come upon us. Where a time, a choice will be made to confess Christ before others or to deny Christ before others. That is our choice. Because there will be a great falling away. And we do not wish to be a part of it. Be steadfast in the storm. Build your foundations on Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Because no one come to the Father but by the Son. So you call on your Father in Jesus' name. To give you strength to stand. Just as Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, they stoned him, but he prayed for them, and he went to sleep. And he saw the glory of God, and Jesus at his right hand. So, <clears throat> think of those that walk with the Lord. Those whose lives were focused wholeheartedly, steadfast. Those that walked with God, those considered a friend to God. Think of those that were delivered in Noah's Ark. And now think of today's time, narrow is the way, few find it, but it lead to eternal life. Wide the path to destruction, many choose it. We have to consider it. We have to think and not take sin lightly, but most seriously. Just as it says, those that look with lust, it's the same as adultery. We have to look at self and examine self daily, because we are to deny self daily. Deny self, pick up your cross and follow me. But those that do not are not worthy of me. These are things to consider. Because we are watching a time, famine is coming. And each and every one of you is more aware of it now than when we first saw it beginning. Those prices are going to continue to increase as well. Because there will be a time, a day's wage for loaf of bread. God does not change. And he seeks all to come to repentance and the knowledge of the truth. There is deception and many false teachers and preachers out there. You have to test everyone as the Bereans did with scripture. Test them vehemently. Those that deny Christ are antichrist. You know all these things happening with the four horses, the beginning signs. You know these lead to the fifth one, when the fifth seal is opened. To die for Christ, many that will lose their lives to that number is filled. We are watching an increase in plagues. We are watching an increase in famines and pestilences. We are watching an increase in earthquakes, volcanoes, eruptions, plumes of smoke, fire and blood. These things are increasing. We're seeing them more and more often that now people are becoming more and more complacent to it. Becoming more and more desensitized from it. Because they do not care. Because they're so occupied with the world. But not with the word of God. The world may distract us. But God will always lead our paths. So that we end up in places we expect not to be. Sometimes in your day to day you might be out doing your day to day. Maybe shopping or buying something for someone or somewhere. And you may be led. To preach to someone. And sow a seed or wake someone up that's fallen asleep. Just to prick their heart with the word of God again. But they themselves would start to labor diligently and seek the truth for themselves. 
because God wishes all to come to the knowledge of the truth. And this world knows how to occupy. So do what good you can, while you can, because you can. Because you don't know where God will lead you. Sometimes he may lead you in places you never considered. Some preach upon the street. Some, they work in ministry. Some, they work in the organization, administration of church. Some focus on the cleaning and the upkeep in the church. The body has many parts. And there's only one head, that is Jesus. But each and every one of us should be joyous in whatever part we're given. Don't be grumbly. Be happy where you are and content in it. And seek the Lord as we spoke in the gifts and the fruits. For God to lead us in his paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So we can walk in them. And diligently and earnestly and lovingly do them. Because you never know where you're going to be led. Sometimes when I'm most ill-prepared. I'm led to someone to preach to. But I do not have my ministry trolley with me to do so. But with whatever I have on hand, I will use. So that I can still get the word out in that moment. Because we are called to always have an answer. The gospel of peace in our heart. We are to always be armoured in spiritual armour. Our shield of faith always held high. And our helmet of salvation always looking up. We must be sure and quick-footed to run to do good for others in love and compassion. When they ask, what do we do to be saved? Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God is there for each and every one of us. He's our joy and our strength. He's there to lead us so we're not deceived by the false preachers of this world. We are to cling to God. He's our shield, our buckler, our strength and our courage. He is the one we call on because all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you must build your relationship with him and learn from him and grow with him. And praise him and give thanks for all he gives. I myself am fortunate. Recently, while acquiring things for the little ones, I ended up in a shop I would never ever go in. But in going in the shop, turned out the man that worked at the till is someone that grew up reading the Bible many a time, but not read it for some time, but did see that the things that we see today that we're not speaking of are signs of the times. And me, with what I know, was able to prick that heart with the verses in the scriptures in regards to what we see today, to say, look where we are, we need to get right with Christ. To bring someone back to the word. To sow a seed for all labourers together. But it's God that gives the increase. So it will be an endeavour to go back to that place. To keep preaching and to keep speaking that word. To keep encouraging. So that more come to Christ. The same again as today while out doing other things that were needed and necessary for the little ones. Looking for a shop I'd never normally go to except for under special occasion, for it was needed. Couldn't find the shop we needed for the item we actually needed and we spent all day from one place to the next. We ended up seeing a street preacher, ended up speaking to a group of street preachers, ended up praying with a group of street preachers but directly in front of a building I'd been looking for all day without knowing it. It was a shop that sold all the items I was looking for. And lo and behold, this was the one shop that had the item 
that I was looking for. So we were able to find all glory to God. So in that moment of being there to speak outside that building with that group of preachers and to be invited to be able to come speak with them again when I next have an opportunity to be able to get there to do so. To be able to sow more seed. You see, evangelism is not my strong point. But if I can get back out there, I trust in the Lord to guide and provide for me while I'm there. And next time I'll be more prepared with more Bible tracts than I was today. So I can get much more of the word out there. You never know where you're going to end up. But it's all glory to God that he leads and guides us. Because I tell you, I hadn't even clocked on that shop that whole day. We probably walked past it more times than I can count. But I hadn't realised that that shop would have that item in there And it had the exact items like the gold looks and the free bears This one's too big, this one's too small, but this one's just right Finally we found what we were looking for And that was the last item I had to find So we got that done All praise and thanks to God And we only found it because of God Because the word of God was being preached directly outside its doors. Had that not have been happening there, I would have walked past it yet again. One more time while going to another destination. Yet again and again and again. Not once clocking what that shop was. Even though its sign was humongous, I still didn't see it, I was blind to it. God woke me up and he had a preacher out there preaching it. We hadn't even intended on going today, we were meant to have gone the day before. But for whatever reason, we didn't go the day before, but we went today. And it turned out today, at that time that we turned up, during that hour's window, that group of people specifically go to that spot, at that hour, to preach the word and to pray together. God knows better than I do. Had I have gone with my original plan, we would have gone yesterday. But we would not have had that encounter. I may not have found that shop. But what I know for certain is I would not have met that group to get that fellowship. To get that point. That possibility of reaching the word out to more. So with that, it gives a new avenue, a new opportunity to preach the word ever more diligently and steadfastly. So next time available, there'll be a place for me to travel to again. To do more work for the Lord. For it's all glory to him I'm able. We should always be diligent and always ever thankful. For it's Christ that leads and Christ that guides. And again, even while we were out and the children were hungry. To do a little bit of good, just to sow a bit of seed in the hope of sowing seed. To leave a tract in the place we went to buy something to eat. So that they could eat. And to do some good for someone else. In the hopes they would heed unto the word. And give them some encouragement that day. Pray the things we do. And the labours we strive to do. That God give increase there. And sow a seed in those hearts that we came upon. In all glory to God and not ourselves. For there will be a day where no man may work. But until that time comes, I'm not one to sit on my laurels. There's lots to do and never enough time to do it. And it's a life dedicated to God. It's a life studying and seeking the Lord every step of the way. Being encouraged in his word, in his mercy, in his kindness. All glory to him. Because we know what time we're in. We see what's happening in this world. And they're so close and so prepared now to bring an end to it. To bring such chaos and such terror. For those that know not God. So that hearts run cold and people betray one another and are offended by one another because they're being raised 
and trained to be such, raise them from young in the way they should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it. We should be aware. We are lambs as a slaughter, that is the truth of it. But if that's the case, I'll lean my neck a little bit more forward. With my head on or off, praising God. Don't be the one that denies Christ. Because those that deny before men, he shall deny before his Father in heaven. And I don't wish to be a part of that list. Let our name not be expunged from the book of life. But that our name doth stay. Because there are going to be those that will deny. There will be those that will betray. And there will be those that throw and reject the word. And there will be those that will celebrate the wickedness of the world instead of the goodness of Christ. Those that live by signs and symbols. Those that eat that unto idols and that of little ones. And far, far worse. There is much wickedness. But we should seek the Lord's refinement. To refine us. We must seek the Lord to trim us. From our excess. For he is the vine dresser. Christ the vine. We the branches. And we need as much trimming as possible to remove where we fall short. So that we can bear fruit. May we live a life of bearing fruit, because iron sharpens iron. And we don't want to get complacent. Because God is a lamp to our path, to our feet. He leadeth us and guide us. He take care of us, whether we know it or not. He gives us understanding. He gives us light. He calls us out of darkness. And a man shall live by the word of God. By every word he speaketh. Because his word is true nourishment. And the peace of God rule in your hearts. Because Christ dwell in us. For greater is he in me than the prince of this world. And tis not I that live but Christ in me. Because those that believe in him. Their hearts shall fill. And overflow with living waters. Oh, may your cups overflow and pour upon others to encourage them also. We are in a time of much darkness and much peril. But there's no time to fear, nor to worry. We are to stand up courageous in Christ. To stand up and seek the word be preached to the corners for the end to come. Because God lead us and guide us. And we are soldiers in Christ. So don't be focused on the world. But on he that enlisted you in pleasing him. Be faithful and steadfast in Christ. May this encourage each and every one of you. I seldom ask but I do ask that you pray now. And ask for prayer for God to encourage. To lead and to guide. And help lead me on the path in this ministry to see if this be his will. So that I can keep on going and doing as I ought. So that I am able to reach more while I still can. God bless each and every one of you.